Hey guys, today I'm going to be talking about why the Zendikar Fetchlands not being reprinted is super important and actually very, very bad for the game. So first of all, I don't want to poo-hoo-hoo um, Battle for Zendikar. I love Battle for Zendikar. I love 4 Art Lands. I love receiving packets of 40 complete art for Art Lands or uh, 20 of them if you buy a gift box, etc, etc. That has a lot of appeal for me because that's guaranteed long-term value and you all, only the only thing you have to look at is the Zendikar 4 Art Basics. At buy list they do pretty well and at retail they do extremely well and they move it really... Right now it's a little depressed because people are expecting, you know, hey I'm going to save money to buy more or have the new 4 Art Lands but initially I would say it, they will rebound and these lands once they rotate out and be, they become harder to get will also go up in price. Fat packs in particular as I've stated all this week is a very good pickup if these fat packs, if these battle for Zendikar fat packs have 40 full art lands, right? That would be an extremely good pickup. So uh, Zendikar reprints, why it's important they didn't make it. Uh, essentially, I don't want to go into too much detail about this, but the fetch land spiked anywhere between Misty Rainforest, I feel like went over a 100% spike. Uh, Tarn is around 80 to $90 as of the recording of this video. People are speculating, they are hoarding cards. Uh, there's no reason. Modern, PT, modern, modern season is almost over and you have a huge, huge run at these cards when they're not going to be used. We all know the cards are being purchased are not being played, right? Because modern season is almost over. So why is there a sudden increase in price? It's because people are speculating on it and that's the nature of the beast that we talk about. Sometimes the MTG line. Anyway, uh, my point is, I would use Tamagorf as an example. A lot of people say, oh, Tamagorf, Tamagorf, Tamagorf. Well, its price did go down. Yes, it did go down a little bit. But imagine if Tamagorf was never reprinted. What would its price be today? That's what you're looking at the enemy fest land. So before, like in a later video this week, I'm going to actually tell you what the solution is because I don't want to ever to like, give you a problem and not like give you a solution because I know maybe the solution to me is like really obvious and sometimes I forget to say in the video but I know a lot of you always ask me hey you know okay so that's the problem but what can we do about it so the Zendikar Fetch Lands have all spiked uh, Verdant Catacombs is $80 right is it $80 $60 whatever it is uh, all the Fetch enemy Fetch Lands are now ridiculously priced and in my opinion their price is a little you know it's kind of embarrassing to be honest with you. I never would want a land in a highly played, in a format being billed as you can play, you can afford, affordable uh, to be over like a hundred dollars and Tarn because it has a four month gap between Battle for Zendikar and the next set. So even after Battle for Zendikar releases, we won't know very much about the next set and assuming the next set doesn't have it and then we are going to go without some time. We're going to go with some time without the enemy fetch lands being reprinted and people are going to say it's in commander deck. I just don't see it. Like I believe and it's true that the market or the speculators also believe that the cards will not be reprinted in commander 2015 as well as you know in any other set so when a land when a piece of land gets over a hundred bucks I feel personally that's kind of a that's kind of that's very bad for the game and the reason I feel that it's bad for the game you need these lands just to play the game but it doesn't feel epic when you played lands right it doesn't feel like okay I just did a Liliana of a veil or a snap casting mage or something that interacts with your opponent something that like you can do and have control over when you crack a fetch land it and the fetch land costs a hundred bucks I don't know if that's a good feeling for most people because I personally don't feel like that should happen where and that's the same way I feel about the dual lands as well, where you need these lands, uh, everyone needs them, and no one, and a large majority of the players who want to be in a format don't have them because there's. Uh, I don't get why 
Um, and a lot of people will say, oh, because you don't want all 10 in standard, blah, 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 like all of that. But you had 10 shock lands in standard, right? That was okay. You had 10 shock lands in the same block. And the other argument was, and you might say, oh, you know, cracking fetch lands and stuff, like, uh, involves manipul not manipulating your deck, that's cheating, right? But like shuffling your deck and taking extra time and games take longer and they're more boring, which is, I absolutely agree, it is. However, you have trained your player base from modern to legacy to now standard to do that. So it's not like you're, not like they are not used to already doing it, like, you know, cracking a land, shuffling a deck. And in my opinion, that's actually very good for the game because it prevents cheating. Uh, if you're constantly shuffling your deck, well, I mean, it, it, it should do it, but you have people like Steven Speck, I'm sure he'll figure out a way to uh, use it to his advantage. But, you know, I mean, like, I, w I would assume that if I'm, my opponent is, you know, and, I, and he's giving me the ability to uh, shuffle his deck as well, that cheating is less common because even if he was cheating in the beginning, like, I'm shuffling his deck away now, right? Um, so I would say the fetch lands, the, I, the point that people are trying to make about them being, I get it, but you've trained legacy, modern, standard right now, everyone just cracks a fetch and here we go, you know, they take extra time. That's what you've trained your players to do, so that's not like to me a reasonable argument and you might disagree in the comments below. The second thing I wanted to say is when Wizards of Coast wants to save lands. I feel like that's a very, very bad philosophy to have is when something is needed, you want to sell a product, a product in the future, but the players need that product now. Mm, you know, most marketplaces, you might say, oh, it's a demand and supply issue, but Wizards of Coast is not making any money when these fetch lands like spike in price, they don't have any interest in the secondary market. So what happens is the secondary market kind of gets out of control, which Wizards of Coast uh, is allowing um, by not reprinting these cards. And a lot of people buy them at higher prices, which would say, hey, there's real demand for these cards now. So when a Tarn goes up from like $50 to 90 or a Misty Rainforest goes from like 40 to 80, or 35 to $70. I don't feel like that's good for the company because the company is not making any money from it, right? And you might say, oh, well, down the road, they can reprint it and it will help sell a product, just like the Onslaught Fetch Lands. But if you look at the Onslaught Fetch Lands, what it actually did was it made the whole other, they made every other card not a Fetch Lands pretty much worthless, um, no matter how good it is. So Siege Rhino. Rhino, a card that is being played in modern, a card that has dominated like for a long time is a four or five dollar card. I, I've never seen that happen where a card has been as dominant as Rhino and Tassiger is an eight dollar. I mean, and not only puts down all the cards in that block, it puts down, I mean, in that set, it puts down all the cards in that entire block is kind of, because why would you buy like Fate Reforged when you can buy a uh, fat pack of Contra Tarkir and get fetch lands that you know will be eternally playable. So my opinion is, yeah, I, I guess I can see like why you would want to save it for the future to help you sell a new product and later down the road, but not when players are needed right now, not when players expect it to be there and it's not there. I think that's a sad part about it is I, if you polled players, maybe 95% of them will, would have believed Zendikar Fetchlands were in Zendikar. Um, I mean, that's the connotation, Zendikar. We, I don't even call it enemy Fetchlands. I've always called them Zendikar Fetchlands from the very beginning. And I don't know why. So when you have a player base who is expecting the cards to be there and they are not there, you're in trouble um, because you've let them down. And maybe next time they don't trust you anymore. Bye, guys.